In this video, we're going to look at circuits. We're going to go through the requirements a circuit must have, what components are, the types of circuits, and circuit diagrams. So this is what a circuit looks like here. It must be closed, have wires, and also a component for it to be called a circuit. So first we'll talk about wires. Wires connect the circuit up and have electrons which are stored in the wire. If there is a break in the circuit, or the circuit is not closed, the electrons won't be able to flow. So as you can see here, there's a buildup of electrons at the bottom, and this prevents the movement of electrons throughout the circuit. There must also be a component in the circuit for it to be functional. The flow of electrons causes friction, which will cause the wire to heat up. And if the wire heats up too much, it may cause a fire. So we need to have a component to create some sort of resistance within the circuit. Now we'll look at the types of components you'll be expected to know in level one, which are these here. So we've got resistors, lamps or light bulbs, batteries or cells, switches, voltmeters and ammeters. So when you draw a circuit diagram, this is how you draw a resistor, a lamp, the battery. And it's really important for this one that the long line is the positive and the short line is the negative. So electrons will be repelled from the negative, the short side, and attracted to the positive, but conventional current will work the other way around. So that's just something to note when we look at circuit diagrams. This is a switch, so as you can see it's open, and like we talked about before, it causes a break in the circuit. So the circuit is open or it's not closed. This means that the switch is off and there'll be no electrons flowing in the circuit. So to close this, you draw the little lever downwards so it's just a flat line with two dots. This is our voltmeter. It measures the amount of voltage over a certain resistor or component. And this is our ammeter, which measures current. These are our two types of circuits here. We've got the series circuit, which has one pathway, and parallel, which has more than one pathway. So in the series circuit, there's the same amount of voltage the entire way around, whereas in parallel, the voltage is split. Now we'll look at series in more depth. So if you think about it, about a line of people, and they want to get into a bar. In order to get into the bar, they've got to walk through the door with the bouncer. A series circuit that has two resistors is like a bar with two bouncers and two doors. The line of people will have to go through both in order to get inside. So for the line of people, it's harder to get into the club, so resistance increases in the circuit, but you can get the same number of people per second into the club, so the current is constant in the circuit. And everyone must go through both doors, it's not one or the other, so the voltage is shared proportionally. Now if we look at parallel circuits, it's like saying there's two doorways. So the line of people must go through one door in order to get into the club. So for this, it's easier to get in, which means the resistance has decreased, because there's two doors, there's two pathways, there's two options for the electrons to flow. The number of people that go through the door per second is shared between both doors, so the current is shared proportionally in the circuit. Obviously if one door is bigger, it can fit more people, so that means if the resistance is higher in one component, it's going to have more current going through it. And everyone must go through one door, so the voltage is going to be constant. So now we'll look at current in a series, parallel and mixed circuit. You can see here, in the series circuit, the current is constant, and in parallel it's shared. With the series circuits, the red arrows show how the current is constant throughout the entire diagram, whereas with the parallel diagram, the orange arrows show the different amounts of current going through each branch. And then the mixed circuit diagram is just a mixture of both, so it's got the constant part as well as the shared part. Now if we look at voltage, we see that in series circuits the voltage is shared, so the 10 ohm resistor will get more voltage than the 5 ohm resistor, it will get twice as much voltage. Whereas in the parallel circuit here, you can see that the voltage is constant, so each branch gets 24 volts. So you can see in the series circuit, the 9 ohm resistor will get 9 volts, the 5 ohm resistor will get 5 volts, and the 10 ohm resistor will get 10 volts. Whereas in the parallel diagram, each branch will get its own supply of 24 volts. Now if we work out the voltage through each resistor in the mixed diagram, if we know that the current is 1.95 amps, we can multiply this by 9 ohms, the resistance, to find the voltage across that resistor, which equals 17.6 volts. So if we subtract 24 minus 17.6, we have 6.4 remaining. And we know that parallel circuits have a constant voltage between each branch. So both of these branches will have 6.4 volts. Now we'll look at resistance. So there's a few equations here you're going to need to know. Resistance in a series circuit is the total or the sum of all resistors in series. So resistor 1 plus resistor 2 plus resistor 3 will give you the total resistance. So here, 
9 plus 5 plus 10 will give us 24 ohms, whereas in parallel circuits, the inverse of each resistor will give us the inverse of the total resistance. So you can see we've got 1 over 10 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 9 gives us 37 divided by 90. So to find the total resistance, we've got to take the inverse of this, which equals 2.43 ohms. So the effective resistance for this circuit is 2.43 ohms. And then with our mixed circuit, it's going to be a combination of the series and parallel. So you're going to use both equations to find the total effective resistance. So a little summary for this, for series circuits, if there's more resistors, there's more resistance or a bigger resistance. Whereas parallel circuits, there's more resistors, there's a smaller resistance. Now we'll go through another quick summary table. So in series circuits, the current is constant, whereas it's shared in parallel. The voltage in a series circuit is shared, whereas in parallel, it's constant through each branch. And lastly, the resistance in a series circuit, if there's more resistors, there's a bigger resistance. And in parallel, more resistors equals a smaller resistance. So these are our two formulae here. So from this video, what you need to know is that we have three circuit requirements. We need wires, a closed circuit, and components. For the components, you need to know these ones here. Resistor, lamp, battery, switch, voltmeter, and ammeter. You need to know the two types of circuits, series and parallel. And you need to know how to figure out and draw circuit diagrams. And lastly, these are the two equations you need to know for this video. So on the left, we've got the equation for the total resistance of a parallel circuit. And on the right, we've got the equation for the total resistance of a series circuit. So that's it for this video. All of this content is pretty fundamental. So make sure you're really confident with answering these types of questions as they'll pop up a lot in all the exams.